Welcome to another Scale Model Basics. This time we're going to talk about green stuff, two-part epoxy. Now, what is green stuff? Well, I just told you it's a two-part epoxy, but it's from Green Stuff World, which basically has built an entire company around this stuff right here, their two-part epoxy, which goes back years. The biggest difference between green stuff and other two-part epoxies that are out on the market is that green stuff is really smooth. It is easily sanded once dry. It is sculptable both before it cures and after it cures, and it feathers very nicely. You might find that other two-part epoxies, like Milliput or Epoxy Sculpt, they're a bit grainier, and while they can still be used for the same things that green stuff is used for, their finish may be not as smooth as what you might want and can achieve from green stuff. So what do you need to work with green stuff? First, you need the green stuff itself. When you open up the package of green stuff, you're going to find that it comes in two different resins, yellow and blue. You mix those together and it makes green. Now, you'll need a knife to cut equal portions of the resins to mix together. I prefer a knife because it's just easier to sort of clean off. And when I'm done with this end, I can just snap that off, put it into the sharps bin, and then continue to use it. You can use scissors to cut this, but you're probably going to get residue on the blades. Just make sure that you clean that residue off with acetone because if it mixes together, it's gonna harden, it's gonna be on the scissors and probably affect operation. So I like using a knife. Something else that you should have on hand, sculpting tools. Do you need as many as these? No, but these will help you to shape the green stuff both when it is soft, before it cures, and after it cures. Because remember, it's shapeable after it's hardened. You can feather it, you can sand it, you can even carve it down. So sculpting tools are very useful to have around when using green stuff. Something else that you're going to want to have on hand, some water and some paper towel because green stuff is sticky. So when you are using your sculpting tools or even your fingers to shape it while it's pliable, you want to use water to help make sure that the green stuff isn't sticking to you or to your tools. You can use petroleum jelly. I don't like using petroleum jelly because I find that when you introduce that onto your model, it becomes almost impossible to get rid of all of that residue off of your model. If you're using green stuff and you're say, let's say you're sculpting a head in green stuff and that's all you're doing, petroleum jelly is probably a fine option because with that head then you're going to be able to get rid of all of the residue off of that piece. But if you're using it on a larger model, it can become something of a problem. So I prefer to use water. Lastly, gloves. Now, I don't use gloves when mixing or working with green stuff. However, I don't have an allergic reaction to green stuff either. Um, I find that working with gloves or finger cots with the green stuff, it just kind of, it's always tacky, it's pulling, and it just makes things more difficult. However, if you do have a reaction to green stuff or you suspect you might have a reaction to the chemicals in green stuff, gloves are definitely something that you're going to want to have on hand when working with it. The first step to working with green stuff is cutting off equal parts of the resin. So just sort of eyeball it. Oh, we can extend the knife here. And I just sort of put a groove down in there. Then just work your knife through it. Now you've got two equal parts of the yellow and the blue. Next, you mix them together. What I'm gonna tell you is that this can take a little bit to get it going, but it turns green. So once it's green all the way through, you know that the putty has been fully mixed. One thing I will caution you about is that there might be some of the putty that doesn't fully mix into the rest, even though it's mostly green or it's, you know, from what you can see, it's all green. And then when you start using it, you might pull part of it off and you'll see 
What I find is almost always a yellow little bit. Um, the blue, almost never. You know, if you see a part that hasn't mixed completely in, don't add it to your model, even though it might seem sticky, because it'll never cure properly. So just take that little bit, excise it, and toss it. But you can see how sticky that green stuff is. And you can see that it is indeed turning green. Now, once you have the green stuff thoroughly mixed, you have about 30 minutes of working time with it. And that is pretty darn good. Already, you can see that it's very shapeable. It has a consistency like clay. You can roll it into thin strips and stretch it. You can even, if you wanted to, you can introduce a roller and even roll it into thin sheets if that's what you need it to do. What I wanted to do is show you a couple of places that I've used green stuff on a partially painted miniature and then a fully painted miniature, just to give you an idea of some of the things that you can do before we start working with it. With this particular model, you've probably seen it around and maybe you're getting a little sick of seeing it, but this model, which is from Reaper Miniatures, has lots of scales on it, right? It's a big old dragon. And some of those scales, when cleaning up the model, they, they weren't necessarily particularly the best detailed, or we lost some detail while going through the cleanup process. And so just in through here, I was able to come back in and re-sculpt scales along here, or in some cases, I was able to add scales down in here. Along this back here, there are ridges, spines down in there that I was able to add that weren't there previously. And then there's also some wrinkles in the flesh and in the underside that I was able to recreate because they were lost when going through cleanup. That's a number of things that you're able to do. On this figure here many years ago, there were a couple of things that had happened. This is a resin figure uh, from Mobius. There were a number of things that had happened. Uh, there was some hair that got snapped off, and then there were some details here in Conan's what? His shorts, his kilt, his skirt, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> the bear skin. There were some details in here that were not as fine as what I wanted them. And so I was able to use green stuff to make that, sculpt that hair in there and add that detail in. I was also able to use green stuff to add hair and texture back in on his head. So as I have said in other videos, I'm not a sculptor, but I get by. So as you can see on this figure, Right here, we've got a bit of a gap on this shoulder. And no matter what I did while trying to glue it, I could not get rid of that gap. So green stuff, a small amount of green stuff in there is gonna be just the thing to get in there, fill that, smooth that out, and make it look more organic. Over here, you can see the same sort of thing. So I'm just gonna use a, a real small amount of green stuff, just tuck it down in there, and smooth it out so that it fills that area. So again, you don't need a lot. I've got a small little bit here. I'm gonna even take less. Remember I told you, green stuff is really tacky. So adding it in there doesn't take much at all. You don't have to really worry about it. Well, if it's not sticking to your finger, it will fill right in without much coaxing at all. And then you can just use your tool to go ahead and snap it off. Once it's in there, now you can start smoothing it out. So again, use some water to keep your, your tool from getting super stuck and just shape away. If you find that you've introduced too much water, you can take just the corner of your paper towel or cotton swab to just wick it away. If you find that you are more comfortable shaping or sanding the green stuff after it has cured, 
That is also an option because remember, it is both of those. It is sandable and shapeable. More in a carving sense. It, not in a sense like clay where right now we're kind of tucking it in and then we're, we're using the tool to smooth it. But after it, has, after it has cured, you can go back in and use a sharper tool to scrape it and get the contours that you're looking for. And I'm actually starting to look, I'm, this is looking pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with how this particular side is looking. Now I may go back, because I'm not sure with this fig what this is supposed to be or that is supposed to be, and if they're supposed to be connected. Now what I can do is, let's say that I've decided that I want this sort of sleeve thing here to be connected to whatever this ornamentation is. What I can do is I can use that as a guide with the green stuff and I can just start building that green stuff up on both sides and now maybe what I'm going to do is create a new detail in there. You can go in and maybe you want to add more of this fringe. So doing that, you just go ahead Roll out some more. See how thin you can get that? Knowing that, you could do more fringe. You could even, if you wanted to, add that and completely eliminate that detail that's on there right now and add maybe just all sorts of fringe coming down off of it. I'm not saying that that's what I'm going to do, but it is an idea that you can, can certainly play with. You can see, I mean, I'm just making up some detail and using my meager abilities to just maybe try and cover up an inconsistency in the fig or, you know, in this case, it could have been how I put it together and it's completely my mistake. But what I can do though is make that mistake into something even better than perhaps it was before. And I can just keep going along there and sort of making this new detail, add that in. And now I have something else that I can paint on there. And you know, that is completely different from somebody else who may have this same fig. So using the same sort of idea then, we would come over here and fill this contour there where there's a bit of a gap on that shoulder, smooth it in and make it all appear to be one piece. Can you use green stuff to make things like sandbags? You sure can. However, there isn't a lot of green stuff in a package of green stuff. So if you're going to make a lot of something like that, then I would suggest going with an epoxy sculpt or a milliput, just because economies of scale. You've got m way more of those two-part epoxies are provided than what you get in just six inches of green stuff. The other thing that you can do is when doing those processes, you can definitely avail yourself of petroleum jelly and it'll help move things along a lot faster. With green stuff, it's really useful for those small projects where you're making details, you're doing organic shapes, and you know if you're gonna do a hand, or a head or a face or something along those lines, green stuff is really useful for doing it too. And again, I'm not a sculptor, but that doesn't mean that I don't try. So give green stuff a try, and I think you'll be pretty happy with the results.